Hi, my name is Jack Allen Willard, and I've got something important to share with you. We are a society soaked in sexual imagery, practice, pornography, and what some would say, fringe behavior. This is not a judgmental video. This is not me telling you to shape up. This is just you and I sharing together. Although I will quote a few scriptures, it's okay if you're not a person of faith. There'll still be value for you in this video. If you have sexual addiction in your life, if that's something that you experience, you may not even call it a struggle. You may say, I like my sexual addiction. Well, let's talk about that in this uh, short video. I call it lust and lasciviousness. Male perspective, the male being me. Again, I'm not a Bible teacher. I'm someone who just shares from my heart. But with this topic, I will quote a few scriptures. Um, we pretty much know what lust is. We know that urge that overtakes us. We know where our eyes take us, where our imagination takes us, and eventually it leads to very possibly acting out on the lustful thoughts that we have. Uh, that can be bad sometimes, and it can certainly consume our lives. Any sex addict knows that. They know that sexual addiction can ruin their potential, their goals, their relationships with their family, etc., etc. Uh, let's uh, look at the definition for lasciviousness. Reflecting reflecting or producing sexual desires or behavior that is considered indecent or obscene. Who considers it that? Society, but also we can measure it by the Word of God, the Word of God. In the Old Testament, Psalm 103, verse 14, it says, for he himself knows our frame. That means he knows who he created. He is mindful that we are but dust. Now, an explanation of that verse, God loves us and has compassion on us. And here's a good one, forgives us, forgives us. He forgives us for and because he knows us. He knows us. His knowledge of us doesn't repel him. I love that. Now, this is not scripture. This is an explanation of the verse. His knowledge of, of us doesn't repel him. His knowledge of us doesn't forever terminate his blessings to us. God knows my weaknesses he has infinite knowledge of my desires and actions. Can't hide from God. There's no secret behavior when it comes to uh, God. He sees everything that we do. That's what um, you come to believe once you open your heart to uh, Christ and uh, put God to the test in a sense receive him as Lord and Savior. That's when you begin to understand the Bible in a way you never did before. You don't discount it as, oh, well, some man or men wrote that. You know, you, you begin to understand the inspiration of God in the scriptures. Although man moved the pen, God was behind the work. This is his words that we are hearing through mortal, flawed men, all right? So uh, there's just so many things we can say on this uh, topic of lust and lasciviousness. Uh, it affects men and women, Christians and non-Christians. It affects boys and girls, and uh, we uh, have been pushing the envelope 
a little bit more year after year, decade after decade. Back in the 50s, we kind of uh, were more in hiding. Now, I was born in the 50s, so I don't really remember it, but I've looked at the historical record in, in movies like American Graffiti, American Graffiti, um, and uh, read about it, you know, read about uh, how uh, life was back then. Um, we, uh, we may not have been cursing out mommy and daddy, but we had the secret little things that we did uh, on Lover's Lane or wherever. Um, sexual desire always finds a space, always finds a stage, or always finds a room to uh, reveal itself in, if you will. Um... We just, we just uh, find out fairly early on, and for me it was very early, that there was uh, desires in me that were going to try and take up a whole lot of time in my life. Um, now, I didn't become a, a Christian to 1984, uh, even though I had gone to Catholic Church and was an altar boy and what have you, I believe I had a personal experience with Jesus Christ till 1984. Not saying he spoke audibly to me, spoke to my heart, and used a preacher, a television evangelist that I really didn't care for, yet was thoroughly entertained by, to help uh bring me to the moment where I would get down on my knees in my mom's apartment while she was away and accept Jesus Christ as my uh, Savior. I don't think I was ready to make him Lord then, and I don't think that uh, my life would uh, demonstrate that I've been very good at that part of it, making him the Lord of my life. I say in other videos, it's easy to ask God for forgiveness to ask him to cleanse you from all your sins, and I believe he will do that. It's another thing to come into repentance, which means a change in direction, to be committed to uh, going towards holiness. Um, I think most men and women uh, who uh, believe that they have uh, accepted Jesus Christ never uh, come to full maturity. I don't think that uh, church <laughs> has a very successful track record in doing that. Um, people will indicate sometimes, well, if the church is ever going to see victory, the church is not going to see victory. The church is not going to see victory. If we read the scriptures, if we read what the last days are going to be like, uh, we will see that there is not going to uh, be a massive turnaround. The, uh, the vehicle is going downhill. The plane is descending, and eventually it's going to hit the water. It's going to hit the water. Uh, individual lives can be changed through Jesus Christ, but uh, the idea that uh, going to church for six hours a week, maybe total, or 45 minutes a week, you know, they, they build these beautiful churches, and they sit there empty most of the time. Um, it's a formula for uh, uh, just going through a ritual and then going on about your life, and it never really changes who you are. In fact, it may work negatively because you think because you're going to Mass, you think because you're going to uh, church on Sunday, and maybe you help out with a coffee hour, or maybe you even do a Bible study, or you uh, you participate in various uh, church activities and, and give of your time and what have you, you may think that, well, you know, that's enough, that's enough, but heart change is a very different thing. Being committed on Tuesday night like you were committed when, you know, the praise team was singing on Sunday morning and whatever, real change doesn't usually occur. 
in in the Christian world, uh, even with Christian leaders, have pastors. They have feet of clay too. They may preach something, but not really live it themselves in their own lives. Many pastors have grown discouraged, especially as we get into a time where we're getting closer to uh, really experiencing the last days. And I have the last days radio show right here at this channel, the virtual church of the disillusioned. You can find those videos. If you look, um, as they, as they see that they're not really bringing much change, um, a lot of pastors get discouraged and then they, they find the, uh, sinful desires in themselves. And maybe they, uh, maybe, uh, they, uh, act out through something like internet porn. It is true that internet porn is everywhere everywhere. You can have an elder look at porn on a Saturday night and Sunday he's serving in church. Oh yeah, he'll, he'll say a, 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 a prayer pleading for forgiveness. He will, or, or she will, but, um, you know, it's not true to say that, uh, through this fellowship that they attend, that they are being transformed uh, by the renewing of their mind. Uh, that's a personal journey to be transformed. That's a one-on-one. -on -one. The Bible talks about going into your inner room or closet, a, a quiet place that you put aside, uh, and it can be, it can be outside, um, a quiet place where you get alone with God, and not only do you pray, but you are ready to listen to meditate on God's word. You read some scripture because the scripture has a way of slowly changing. It penetrates into the joints and marrow, the word of God says. Point, uh, it penetrates into the joints and marrow of our very being. And only that way can we begin to experience real change. Uh, on Sunday morning, it can be just like a social club. Um, and uh, yes, um, Christians uh, come in and they're dressed like they're living in the world. And, you know, some of the more relaxed churches didn't help that because here's the pastor in jeans and faded jeans. He's trying to be hip and what have you. And uh, so, uh, yeah, they're... Uh, there are women that come to church and yes, you're right. They're, they're, they're not dressed modestly and the men there are lusting after them and the teenage boys are lusting after them. And, um, this, uh, this is, this has always, uh, uh, been the case. When I became a Christian in 1984, I realized at that time that I needed to start changing my behavior. And there were times when I was successful in that, and there are times when I failed miserably. It wasn't the devil, uh, although the devil is present and, and, and does try to lure you. Uh, I'm talking about an evil force, an evil force. Yes, I, I'm not denying that because the Bible talks about that. Uh, there are powers uh, in high places, principalities and powers that are uh, at work to discourage you from a serious walk with Christ. The body of Christ is ravaged by failure. I didn't plan to say that. I was going for uh, something else, but that came out. The body of Christ is ravaged in failure, and the world knows it. The world knows it. And uh, when, we, when we talk about sexuality, we are, uh, we are talking about something that so many uh, uh, people, both male and female, struggle with. Um, it is true to say that uh, 
uh, women uh, will be guilty of lasciviousness because they will dress to be noticed. That's a fair statement. Uh, they will dress to be noticed. They want men's uh, heads to turn. They want you to notice what they're wearing. They want you to look at them. And then when your eyes meet, they will give you a look, especially if they're not attracted to you. They will give you a look of, uh, of uh, shock and annoyance. How dare you look at me <laughs> with my uh, boobs a half out and my tight skirt. How dare you look at me? Um, men are geared. Men were created to, uh, to desire uh, sex, to notice a woman's body, to notice the breast and the butt, etc., etc., the legs, the lips, the whole thing. God did a wonderful job creating women to be beautiful, to be beautiful. And when I say beautiful... Um, that's in the eyes of the beholder. The idea that if a, if a woman uh, dresses modestly, that kind of uh, temptation for the man will be wiped out. No, no, not really. Um, I heard someone saying, uh, you know, quoting the Lord's Prayer, uh, lead me not into temptation because I'm perfectly able to get there all on my own. And isn't that true? Isn't that true? The idea that because a, uh, a, a child, teenager perhaps, comes from a Christian home, you are going to be able to stop them, shield them from going through the stages of temptation and sexual sin uh, no, you won't. No, you won't. What the Bible says is train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is older, not 16, not 18, when he is older, he will not depart from it. In other words, he'll return from it. He'll return to it. You know, there'll come a time when he'll start to reflect on the things of God. He'll remember. He'll remember um, that uh, God is important to him and that we are called to please God. But uh, the conundrum that we all find ourselves in is that we are uh, compelled, we are compelled to, uh, to um, want sexual fulfillment. And... Um, so here we are now in 2023, as I do this video, and we are absolutely saturated with sexual imagery. Uh, we have the LGP, uh, LG, uh, BTQ, uh, movement, uh, in full force, uh, we have seen things that we never thought we would see, like um, the transgender movement, even though it's really just a very small percentage of the general population, uh, trying to take center stage in the sense that they are pushing for young children to be able to have sexual uh, gender uh, changing surgery, sometimes without the permission of the parents, lopping off the breast of 13-year-old girls, chemically castrating boys. Now, this is not widespread yet, but they're just getting started. They're just getting started. There are hospitals, and you can find these interviews with uh, the staff from these hospitals where they say, yes, yes. Uh, sometimes they, they got these interviews incognito. They didn't realize they were being filmed. But yes, we do uh, sexual uh, uh, reassignment surgery for children on up, children on up. And of course, a 12 or 13 or 14 year old is not ready to make that kind of decision, that kind of life-changing decision that they will most surely regret down the road. 
and it's sexual abuse to put that on a child. They may be dealing with bipolar uh, illness. They may be dealing with depression. They may be dealing with bullying and what have you. And uh, they see on their social media the new thing is being transgender. And, and, and a boy will think, gee, if I'm transgender, I can go into the girls' locker room, and that'll be appealing to them. And so we have, we have 1% or 2% that are taking away the rights. We, were, we used to be pro uh, the rights of women, you know, a feminist for the rights of women. Now that's out the window, and now we are saying that the 1% or 2% should, uh, should be able to pretty much destroy women's sports, uh, destroy uh, high school girls' sports, because um, biologically, a biological male will be able to, uh, to compete and win uh, over uh, a, a female. They... We, we see this happening with Leah Thomas and uh, so many other uh, experiences. And so we have uh, teenage girls that have trained for a particular sport and they have, uh, they have just sacrificed so much and now they're being uh, defeated by a biological male who thinks that they can go into the uh, shower room with them. We're losing our minds here in 2023. We're losing our minds. And that doesn't mean that transgender people shouldn't have rights. Um, maybe you do have to accommodate uh, them with, a, with a, a locker room or what have you. But we always have to consider uh, everybody's rights everybody's rights and we can't let a small minority uh, dictate what's going to happen with uh, our uh, our uh, girls boys men and women uh, they're entitled to their privacy they're entitled to their feelings and they're entitled to uh, compete in sports and it be fair it be fair um but ch church does not tend to bring radical change in people's lives, you know. Um, you can listen to Joyce Meyer, who's, who's great, and there are some up-and-coming Joyce Meyers that I've noticed that have wonderful talent and, and, and do wonderful research. They, 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 uh, they come to the microphone prepared. I've seen it, and it's, uh, it's very inspiring. I wouldn't agree with everything. But um, uh, you can do that. Uh, but uh, this is why, over the decades, there have been Christians, uh, Christian leaders, or they presented themselves as a Christian leader that wanted to start a Christian community. You know, uh, we are at a time right now where we are so divided, so divided in this world that it seems like the Christians are going to have to, uh, and not just Christians, but those who don't want the world to turn into a cesspool of violence and uh, um, woke, progressive ideas that don't want to be part of that, they're going to have to live apart, you know? You talk about what happened in the Civil War. Well, many people have said we could be headed towards that again, the problem is with the threat of China and Russia, Iran, et cetera, et cetera, um, how can we defend America if we are no longer the United States of America? Jason Whitlock, who's a brilliant uh, uh, Christian conservative who used to do sports and now uh, talks about, uh, you know, the politics, the, the state of our country, what's become of it under Joe Biden, um, he, he, he's, he's talking about secession now. You know, Texas has wanted to uh, uh, secede. 
uh, for quite a long time, you know, be a separate entity. I've heard that they're talking about this in Oregon. That would be the liberal version, you know. Uh, Oregon is already crime-ridden and unsafe, and uh, California, San Francisco, uh, drugs openly on the streets. Uh, the, the As I talk to you d- recording this video the uh, inventor of Cash App, which I have on my phone. Cash App was stabbed multiple times, stabbed to death in San Francisco just a couple of uh, days ago. A brilliant guy who had a promising future, already was living the dream, and he was stabbed to death. They haven't caught the person, as I do this recording, on the streets of San Francisco because both the uh, the mayor and, and especially the governor of California uh, did not keep his oath. He has not kept uh, the, uh, uh, America safe. They do not fire the prosecutors that downgrade all the charges and uh, uh, let somebody out who's committed a violent offense. Uh, and so now we have uh, something, as I've said before, that is like Back to the Future 2, uh, anarchy, anarchy is coming to the United States of America in two years time. And I'm not the biggest Trump supporter you'll ever find. I know about all his flaws, but in two years time under Joe Biden, we have seen everything that Joe Biden touches turn to crap. We have seen, uh, the plane is clearly now in a nosedive and how long before we hit the water, all the war hawk generals that want us to spend every dime in the bombed out shell known as the Ukraine, uh, don't talk about too much what it's going to be like when Putin or uh, Chi in, uh, or G as he sometimes called in China, presses the button and we have a nuclear weapon coming this way. Certain leaders will have uh, bunkers to go into. We will be melting in the street. So um, it's, a, it's a tough time because we're in what the Bible calls is the last days. And uh, one way that people work off their anxiety, uh, work work off the fact that they never really went for their dreams in life is through sexual practice. Now, I'm not Pollyanna here. You know, um, I think many of us have had bisexual feelings. What I saw happen is, is, uh, especially it started in the 90s, is a lot of women that had had a long history of relationships with men, all of a sudden they said that they were lesbians. And I thought, well, that can't be. Your sexual history doesn't define you as a lesbian. What they should have said was, I, uh, I have been hurt by men too many times, and I found a woman who is caring and loving and isn't going to call me a stupid you-know-what, and um, I feel more comfortable with them, and I'm enjoying them sexually. Uh, instead, they just uh, say, no, I'm, I'm lesbian. I'm 100% lesbian. Well, you know, <laughs> that's not really true, is it? That's not really true. Um, And, uh, of course, the church is quick to condemn uh, bisexuality and what have you. But uh, it's always sexuality that that seems to bring a minister down, that seems to uh, hold a Christian back, uh, feeling the guilt and and the shame. And, uh, you know, it's really hard for men to to say that I'm going to be focused on one woman for the rest of my life. It, to us, it's kind of like saying, now, for the rest of your life, you know you know, you love Chinese food, right? So it should be no problem that for the rest of your life, every night, you have Chinese food for dinner. And the reality is, is that uh, after a while, you get, you get sick of uh, Chinese food, you know? You get sick of it. So uh, when we're talking about the flesh in men, it is very hard to live up to that standard. Now, when we're talking about marriage, keep in mind, uh, marriage is in the Bible, but it's not a piece of paper. Uh, uh, Legal marriage uh, that involves the government was not in biblical times. It wasn't until, what, 1916, okay? So, but there there, uh, is plenty of... uh, evidence that, uh, that especially in the new Testament, God spoke of, uh, 
of a commitment, uh, of, uh, of being faithful to your spouse. It's in there, and I'm not here to change the Word of God. Now, if we look at the Old Testament, where we had Samson and Delilah and uh, Abraham with his daughters and, and, and what have you, all kinds of things going on, um, they had concubines, and it seemed to be okay. Not only did they have multiple wives, but they had concubines. What would we call that uh, now? The, what would our word be for a concubine? <laughs> Something on the side, right? A piece on the side. So, um, uh, I'm going to close with Romans 7, which I've talked about before. But uh, it, it is so true that the Bible talks us about being uh, talks about being sexual pure, about us being sexually uh, pure servants of God. That should be the goal that we strive for. Um, Amy Grant, back when I was playing contemporary Christian music in the '90s, I often played her song "Thy Word." Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet. Well, now in 2023, she's getting ready, her and Vince Gill are getting ready to uh, cater a wedding for her lesbian niece, you know, and she's taking a lot of flack from that. <laughs> um, it's a uh, it's, uh, different dynamic right now. It's a different dynamic, but the Word of God never changes. I get that. The Word of God never changes. Uh, perfection, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Uh, the man who wrote that also wrote a confession in Romans 7. He wrote a confession. And although I've talked about it and read it in other videos, it's uh, it's very important for this uh, story on uh, this video on lust and lasciviousness because uh, Paul is being honest to the point where in many churches, I think the elders of the church would get together and uh, want to throw his butt out the door. They'd want to throw Paul out the door, you know, because he wrote <laughs> under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He wrote, you can quote Second Timothy, sure you can, but remember that the person who uh, uh, wrote that under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, also wrote uh, this in Romans 7, beginning with verse 14, beginning with verse 14. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin? Do you know what the legalist, uh, what the uh, conservative Baptists think when they read something like that? Oh, they, they, th those who, uh, who do the study Bibles, did the commentary, they have problems with this scripture. What do you mean sold as a slave to sin, Paul? Uh, you were on the road to Damascus. Damascus. You had a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. He goes on, verse 15, I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law, Old Testament law, is good, and it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. Sounds like he's confessing to present-day sin. Oh my goodness, let's call the elders. For I know that good, verse 18, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I want to do, for I do not, I do, not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it. He says this again, but it is sin living in me that does it. Almost sounds like a cop-out. Um, verse 21, so I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. Evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, in my inner being. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. 
Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The whole reason Jesus came to the cross, the whole reason he died on a cross was to save me in spite of my sin, to wash my sin away, to be a substitute. God requires uh, the shedding of blood for the remission of sins. So Jesus Christ became the ultimate sacrificial lamb. All you have to do is receive him, to get alone and quiet and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I believe that You died for my sins, and I want to receive your gift. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me of all my sin. Forgive me. And if you can do that, pray it honestly, you can change your whole life. But I would be foolish if I told you that that's going to eliminate lust in your life or that going to church on Sunday is suddenly going to uh, to make you a victor. All you know, the the journey just begins when you do that. But yes, there are people that they spend so much time in God's Word and, and prayer and what have you uh, that uh, they are able to uh, see real growth in their life uh, and get free. Uh, of of the of the bonds of lust to a degree i don't think there's ever a total victory because the flesh is right there as paul says with us with us so um it's not the responsibility of a woman for me to uh to be prayed up and keeping my focus uh you can't expect the world to uh to conform to uh, modesty. They're not going to do that. If you go to the beach, you're going to see women and sometimes teenagers in uh, thong bathing suits. You know, Um, it's just uh, how it is now more than ever. You're going to see guys suggestively dressed in tight apparel or what have you. That's the way it is. Um, my reason for doing this video, though, is to say that uh, not to condone lust or lasciviousness, but also not to be Pollyanna about it, not to delude ourselves that we are going to have uh, see uh, the churches leading people uh, to uh, maturity in Christ. They've never been able to do it before, although there have been teachers, and there have been churches that have seen uh, success and transformation. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that uh, most of us will die of falling short. We all fall short. We all fall short of the glory of God. But if we're in the fight and we're uh, serious about uh, pleasing God, if we really care about holiness, and we, 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 we call on the power of the Holy Spirit, he will begin to change us. He will begin to change us. The most terrible thing is when we find out we really love our pet sins. We really love our pet sins. And uh, judgmental Christians who uh, um, are there to... Uh, condemn you for this or that, usually ignoring the sin in their own lives, uh, that's not helpful. That's not helpful. Uh, But uh, prayer and reading God's Word can do wonders. I don't know how this video is to you. Uh, I just had to share it. I'm staying up real late to do it when I have an appointment um, an hour down the road, uh, fairly early for me, but uh, I wanted to spend this time with you and talk about lust and lasciviousness from a male perspective. It is the struggle, always has been way back in the day, and it certainly is in 2023.